what we've seen probably not so much from 2020, but over the last couple of years, um, is that HVAC systems are they no longer a luxury for um, mobile applications, be it trains or military vehicles or or mining equipment. Um, it, it's actually it's become a necessity to the extent that if the HVAC doesn't work, um, the drivers are allowed to stop the vehicle and stop working. Um, you know, what's happened with COVID is obviously production has been quite low and what you've seen is particularly in the rail um, segment um, because of social distancing, etc., cetera, um, fewer people are traveling. So, so we haven't seen a massive uptake in the last year um, due to COVID as opposed to, you know, expecting an uptake um, due to COVID. But um, just from a health and safety point of view, um, having a properly fully operational HVAC um, is it's become a tool of the trade and it's become a necessity. Um, and, and that we've, we've most certainly seen um, over the last few years. Um, so also just to add on to what Brenton said regarding COVID over the last while, um, I'm no viral expert, but most of these vehicles are only a single occupant, so there's no need, no need to excessively ventilate them to um, for, for COVID protocols. How do effective HVAC systems contribute to improved health and safety on both track, track and trackless equipment, respectively? Yeah, so that has got to do with a, a safe working environment that, that um, employers need to provide to their employees. So. In a vehicle, um, what happens is, so assuming it's, it's, a, it's a hot day and Uppington, those can get to 45 degrees, which means inside that vehicle, without an air conditioner, without ventilation, um, you can get up to 70, 75 degrees inside of that. And that is obviously incredibly unsafe for people to work in because they can pass out and then they're literally driving a 200 ton like freight train. Um, so by by adding air conditioning to these vehicles, it, it drops the temperatures to a much more maintainable temperature whereby a person is, is in a safe environment to, to operate that vehicle. And then how does Boyka go about ensuring that your products can operate in these hot and dusty condition, conditions like you mentioned? So we, we design from the ground up. So while these are, are standard products for us, um, it's a custom design solution. So we, we make sure that the components we select and the coils that we design are able to operate in these in these environments. So we we will determine what the required heat load is, make sure that we can reject the heat into the into the environment at those ambient temperatures. At, at that at a design phase, we've got quite a we've got quite a suite of software from from finite element analysis through to computational flow dynamics to verify that the air flows and the heat rejection is sufficient in those systems. Okay. Then we also have We'll then go through quite a detailed testing phase from, from climate testing in various ambients to, to make sure that the system does operate and doesn't trip to vibration testing or shock and vibration testing um, and, and various other humidity cycling tests, high ambient uh, cycling tests, et cetera, before these products get into the field. So just to make sure that if we say it's going to work, we know it's going to work. It's not, it's, not by, it's not by luck that these systems work, it's by design. I think if I can add on to that, I mean, we've got a 30-year-plus history in this game. So um, we've got HVACs operating all over the world um, in various applications. Um, and like Grant said, we um, there's a lot of research, research and development that's gone into the development of our units. Um, and costs, like I said before, costs have always been a bit of an issue because our units are, I guess we've been told that our units are over-engineered. Um, and it's, it's, it's a change of the mindset from, it's not over-engineered, it is actually engineered properly for the harsh conditions of um, South Africa. So, um, and, and, and that's, where, that's where our units come into its, its own. So we've got an engineering department that does all the, the design and, and 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 analysis and testing that, that Grant referred to. Um, our units are vibration tested 
Um, so we know that they they will withstand um, almost anything you throw at it. And so with a 30-year track record, um, we've got units that are 30 years old that are still operational. Are there any new areas of demand for HVAC solutions you are seeing either in South Africa or into Africa? Is there maybe an emerging market for your products or a potential footprint expansion opportunity for the company? Anything to that effect? So I think what, we, what we're finding at the moment is um, because we sell a more niche product, um, people are looking for, as opposed to the normal off-the-shelf uh, mobile HVACs that you get uh, that only operate up to about a 35, in a 35 ambient, ours obviously operate a lot higher. Um, so when they're starting to build these mines in these, these hotter areas in the Northern Cape, um, Mines are finding that the, the downtime because of failures on these systems, because they're not really rated for, for off-road use, for the higher dust, for the higher ambience, that they are, are they're suffering quite significantly from downtime. So they, um, they, they, they're they opting to use our systems um, because obviously they <laughs> the systems aren't failing in these environments and that's the, they don't have the downtime. Um, that's why I did not say that very well. Yeah, you know, so so I think you know just to add on to that, it's what you probably saw a couple of years ago is that from a pricing point of view, um, the consumer would look at cost and they would they would look at, at the cost of the product um, and the cost of our product versus competitors and and our products tend to be a bit more expensive. And you might have the argument that I could have, I could buy two of these units as opposed to one of your units. Um, what we're starting to see is that they're starting to look at the, to the total cost of ownership. So it's not the cost of the unit per se, but it's the cost of lost production um, when those units fail more frequently and a vehicle stands still for an hour. There's the cost of that lost production compared to the cost of our units and the reliability of our units are um, that, well, the benefit of, of that far outweighs the, the cost of it. Um, so that's what we, so, so we're seeing that there's a move to more reliable products that it might be a bit more expensive to buy, but over the, the longer period um, of usage um, is actually cheaper to operate.